Hello everybody and welcome to Yoshi 1 Kenobi's spoiler season deck deck for Zendikar Rising. Today we are going to be talking about a whole new legendary creature that really got my interest from the spoiler. It's Zaretsan, the trickster. Now this is a 5 mana 4-4 four, four flash. And for five, for four mana, you get to return an unblocked attacking rogue you control to its owner's hand. Put Zaretsan, the trickster, from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. So it kind of does a ninja trick, where it swaps place with an attacking rogue. That's unblocked. And whenever Zaretsan deals combat damage to a player, you put target permanent card from that player's graveyard on the battlefield. You basically get a reanimation effect from your opponent's graveyard for free if you get to connect and attack with Zaretsan, which is extremely powerful. Now, the fact that you get to do that little swappy shenanigan for four mana is going to bring the deck. Uh, it's going to be the basis for deck that I'm presenting today. But you shouldn't neglect the fact that you can just hard cast Zaretsan for 5 mana at the end of your opponent's turn and then swing for 4 with a surprise attack. So let's take a look at the deck list. So the deck list makes use of 3 new rogues that we have. There's Zaretsan the Trickster, the 5 mana rogue. We'll also play Merfolk Wind Robber, which at this point in time is one of the best uh, rogues that we can see for one mana where it enters the battlefield as a 1-1 whenever you attack your opponent you get to mill one card which is relevant for a couple of reasons one it helps us to use Teed guilds and forces ability to transform it into a 3-2 death touch second it feeds our opponent's graveyard so that Vantress gargoyle becomes active also, it gives us more targets for Zaretsan, because Zaretsan getting to revive a Ornithopter is not what we want. We want something like an Ugin, or something very powerful. So the more cards we send to our opponent's graveyard, the more chances our opponent is going to summon our own turn four. Uh, I mean, the more chances are that Zaretsan is going to hit a valid target in our opponent's graveyard. Now, of course, we have to be careful of Croxa and Uro, and based on the metagame, this might not be uh, the best deck to play, but it sure sounds like a lot of fun. Let's continue with the game plan. So, Teeth Guild's Enforcer has a similar ability. Whenever you play a rogue, you mill your opponent for two. So, it kind of goes with the Wind Robber. Also, they're both creatures that are slightly harder to block. Uh, Merfolk Wind Robber has Flying, while Thief Guild Enforcer has Death Touch. So our opponent doesn't necessarily want to block those, which means that we can do Swapity Swap, swapity swap with Zaretsan and trick our opponent into playing their cards for free. Then we play Vantress Gargoyle, because if we're going to mill our opponent, well, a 5-4 Flyer sounds like a pretty sweet deal. And with the rest of our deck, uh, We'll play other value cards. So Acquisitions Expert is one of the cards I really like from the new set. So it's basically an improvement on a Burglar Wrath. So it's a 1-2 when you play it. If you only have that card, then your opponent has to discard a card. Well, they have to reveal it, then they discard that one card. So it's really a Burglar Wrath with better stats. That's a Rogue. Now, the fact that's a rogue means we can use Zaretsan the Trickster, we get to trigger Thieves Guild Enforcer's ability. We also trigger Robber of the Riches. Uh, if we've exiled some cards with it, then Acquisition Expert can attack. We'll get the trigger of attacking with a rogue, which will allow us to play the card. Furthermore, Zaretsan's ability is not only positive in that you're replacing the creature with a 4-4, but it also means that you get to bounce that creature back into your hand. So, you play the Acquisitions Expert, your opponent discards a card, then later you attack with the Acquisition Expert, you swap it with Zaretsan, which means that your Acquisition Expert is back in hand, which means you get to cast it again to make your opponent discard one more card. And so you get a lot of value out of that. We're splashing red for Robber of the Rich, because it's a powerful rogue that will generate 
large amounts of card advantage. And I want to make this deck a moderately aggressive small rogues type of deck that really uses the power of Zarat San to close out the games. Since we're milling our opponent's graveyard, we'll play four copies of Drown in the Lock, which is a two mana counter spell that doesn't even cost double blue, so that's even better. That can also be used as a removal spell, so in this deck, mm, it's really candy. It's very powerful. Then we're playing four copies of one of the best rogues from Throne of Eldraine, Brazen Borrower. Yes, not only does it bounce stuff, come back as a creature, have flash, but it's also a rogue, which can trigger all the good stuff from the deck. Also, it's another flyer that we can swapity swap with Zaret San. And then we get Brazen Borrower back into our hand, and guess what? We get to bounce something one more time. Isn't it wonderful? And then we play two copies of Neutralize, uh, just counter magic, two copies of Murder Shredder uh, as a kill spell, that, and most of the, uh, about half of our deck has Flash. So Thief Gills Enforcer has Flash, Drown in the Lock, Raisin Borrower, Neutralize, Murder Shredder can all be played at instant speed, as well as Zaret San. So we play kind of as a half Flash deck with a little bit of aggression and lots of tricks, lots of value. Uh, so that's the game plan. In terms of the mana, I think we can support the Grixis Colors for just splashing the Robber of the Witch because of the Pathways. So the Pathways are really great at uh, setting you up for three colors, as long as you don't require too much of doubles of one color. So our mana is purely symmetrical with the Pathways, but we play two with two islands, two swamp, two mountains, and four fabled passages. Uh, it brings us to 14 sources for everything. Well, 14 potential sources. But since we have double blue and double black on Murderous Rider, Neutralize, and Brazen Borrower, we'll also play two Temples of the Seat. And we can also afford a little bit of Temple Loss, and we'll benefit from the Scry. So that is the Zarat San the Trickster Rogue decklist, based on only the spoilers from day one of Zendikar Rising. Tell me what you think about the decklist in the comments and how excited you are to see Zaret San the Trickster in action once the set releases. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe by clicking the Yoshi icon at the right of your screen. It doesn't cost you any mana and it greatly helps to support this channel and keep the awesome videos coming.